yet another beautiful day all across the region. Plenty of sunshine can be found on our downtown Roanoke sky cam. A few of those high clouds, but certainly not blocking out the sunshine. A temperature of 81. That's what we have in Martinsville, 80 in Danville. A little bit cooler in Hillsville coming in at 74 degrees, but temperatures tonight pretty mild. We'll see the cloud cover increase just a little bit, but temperatures do return to the 70s and lower 80s come tomorrow. We're tracking thunderstorm chances for Friday. 10 News at 5 starts now. Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 5, working for you. Now at 5, cash for classes. How Montgomery County is funding pay raises for teachers. Plus, safety in selfies. What you need to know about protecting yourself while you try to snap the perfect picture. And new warnings about a plant that some believe eases the symptoms of withdrawal. The concerns about Kratom. Not enough homes to meet the demand. Right now, Roanoke is a seller's market. And if you are waiting to put an offer on a property, local realtors are telling us to tell you, don't wait too long. 10 News reporter Arisha Jones is live tonight. She's in Roanoke to tell us more about the upward trend in the Roanoke Valley. Arisha. Realtors don't know how long this trend will last, but the numbers are continuing to increase with people both buying and selling homes. This home in South Roanoke County will have some new tenants in a few weeks. The realtor said it took no time to sell. This beautiful home right here sold in a day. Um, the loan fell through uh, with the buyer as so we put it back on the market uh, a week or two later and it sold in a day again. So yeah, when you walk out on the deck here, I mean, as you can tell, it, it's a brand new deck. Kid Carter with Long and Foster says home sales in the Roanoke Valley are on the rise. He calls it a seller's market. I'm telling them if you see a house that you love, don't wait on it. At the same time, it's, it's kind of a double edged sword because you don't want to rush into something, especially the biggest purchase of your life. But there's not enough homes to meet the demand. Some listings aren't even lasting a whole day. For this couple I've been working with and I took them out to see this one house that had been on the market for two hours, two hours. Took them out there, they loved it. I went straight back to the office, typed up the contract, sent it over to the listing agent, and we still lost it to another offer. The Roanoke Valley Association of Realtors covers the cities of Roanoke, Salem, the town of Benton, by the Todd, Craig, and Roanoke counties, plus portions of Bedford and Franklin counties. Numbers show 447 homes sold in March, which is a 38% increase over February. I know what we're seeing here, and it's the craziest that I've ever seen it. On 10 News at 6, I'll tell you some of the reasons of the rising home sales. Live in Rono, Arisha Jones, 10 News, working for you. Federal authorities have arrested one man after a traffic stop on 581 this morning. According to a spokesperson for the U.S. Marshals Service, a tip about a person running from authorities led them to a tractor trailer that was heading for Roanoke. That vehicle was pulled over just past Elm Avenue on 581. Police arrested the suspect. He has not been identified yet and police have not said what charges the suspect is facing. New warnings from police after a security camera catches a car burglary on video and we can show it to you tonight. Roanoke County Police say it happened in the North Lakes community. In the video, take a look. It's very clear. You'll see several suspects walking up and down the streets, opening unlocked car doors and making off with valuables. Police say it serves as a good reminder to lock your cars. Meanwhile, if you have any information about these incidents or if you recognize these people, that's happened early yesterday morning, Please call police. Two people from Amherst County have been arrested, accused of stealing hundreds of pieces of mail. Charles and Lauren Branham are facing almost 200 counts each of theft of mail. Investigators say people living in the Monroe and Elan areas of Amherst County began complaining that mail was missing and also that their checks had been cashed in surrounding counties. Police recovered more than 500 pieces of stolen mail from 145 residents in Amherst County. The search has ended for a woman police say is obsessed with the Columbine shooting and threatened violence ahead of the upcoming milestone anniversary. Law enforcement officials say 18-year-old Sol Pais is dead. 
The Florida teenager was on the FBI's radar because of her so-called obsession with the Columbine shooting. She also made threats to commit an act of violence in the Denver area ahead of the tragedy's 20th anniversary. Pais flew to Colorado on Monday. Their investigators say she bought a pump action shotgun and ammunition. At least 20 schools in the Denver area were sent into a lockdown situation as a precaution. And we'll have more on this story coming up tonight on 10 News at 530. As cleanup efforts continue after deadly storms, parts of the Midwest and the South are bracing for more severe weather. Overnight tonight, northern Texas and areas up through the central plains are bracing for heavy winds and hail. Those storms supposed to move, move uh, spitting some rain and some high winds further east. That it does include ripping back into areas that are already dealing with the aftermath of last weekend's storms. All of a sudden you're crouching on the floor, crying, praying that it's not you, you know. It's crazy that it just happened to us. And Virginia is expected to be in the path of those storms. For more on when and what to expect, Storm Team 10 meteorologist Beverly Perry will have a look at your forecast that's coming up after the break. But while you wait, it might be a good time that you sit down and download the Storm Team 10 weather app. All the latest forecasts and alerts sent straight to your phone, including severe weather. Just search WSOS in your phone's app store. New concerns tonight over the iconic windows that decorate the side of the fire ravaged Notre Dame Cathedral. Authorities say the rose windows are still actually in pretty good shape, but it's their support structures that are at risk. Firefighters have taken down statues near the round stained glass pieces to protect them. Authorities are taking a look at the building to see which parts will have to be rebuilt. Nations, wealthy French companies, even Disney have all volunteered money to help rebuild the iconic Lady of Paris. More money will be flowing into Montgomery County Public Schools next year thanks to a last minute change on the county budget from the Board of Supervisors. The school district will get more than 800,000 extra dollars to pay for raises, health care and new teachers. 10 News reporter Taj Simmons sifted through the numbers and breaks down the budget. When you ask the Montgomery County Board of Supervisors what's special about the county, the kids are always near the top. The schools are very important. Why is that? They educate our future. The county's budget for next year includes a $3 million increase in general funding for Montgomery County Public Schools. But when the school board told supervisors that was not enough to cover pay raises and new teacher hires, the supervisors listened. What's happening in our schools is what's happening throughout the whole community at everybody's dinner table. It's something that is very, very important to all of us. Supervisors unanimously approved an $844,000 solution when they finalized the budget this week. Their first draft designated one and a half cents in increases or about $1.2 million for school building funding, but instead they decided to move a cent of that earmarked money into the general fund so that the school board can pay for what they need, including 19 new teachers. As Montgomery County grows, so do the number of children in our classrooms, and so we, we understand that that means more teachers. The Board of Supervisors says they don't play around when they decide how much money to give the school district, and they say this latest increase is something parents and taxpayers can be proud of. The school board and the Board of Supervisors are working together. We may not see eye to eye on everything, but we are working together. We're trying to compromise. In Montgomery County, Taj Simmons, 10 News, working for you. A new poll finds that Americans aren't ready for investigations into President Donald Trump to be over. According to a poll from the Associated Press, people want more congressional probes even after the special counsel's report. A redacted version of that report is scheduled to be released tomorrow, weeks after a letter from Attorney General William Barr late last month. Now that letter says the special counsel's report found no criminal activity between the president and Russia during the 2016 election, but did not make a judgment on obstruction charges. Well, years after reports of its lead tainted water crisis, the city of Flint, Michigan is getting more money to help. $77.7 million in loan assistance that was promised to the city in 2017 has finally arrived. The state says the money will help complete a water pipeline, make reservoir and pump station improvements and fund some other work. The director of public works says the city is grateful for the money. 
Back here in the Commonwealth, 30 permanent supportive housing and rehousing projects are getting thousands in grant money. In our area, the Council of Community Services, which serves Covington, Roanoke, Salem, and surrounding areas, is getting 35,000. Miriam's house in Lynchburg is getting 100,000. The governor says the funding will help to ensure that no Virginian is left behind. Staying safe while taking your selfie. Think about this. The warning from experts tonight after another young woman dies in pursuit of what she thought was the perfect picture. Mm. Plus sunshine for now, but the threat of severe weather returns later this week. Meteorologist Beverly Perry has a look at when and where the storms will strike. Hope you got a chance to get out and enjoy the warmth today. 70s and 80s. That's what we have on our Martinsville Skycam. 81 degrees. Few of those high clouds. So some filtered sunshine out there, but the dew point still fairly low and it's actually feeling pretty comfortable out there. We have more of a south wind and that's going to be the case as we go over the course of the next couple of days. So ushering in some more moisture for us. 87 degrees in Smith Mound Lake. It is a warm afternoon in Danville. 80 degrees, 81 in Roanoke, a little bit cooler in Hillsville. 73 degrees, but you know it's still feeling great. And again, that south wind is running between about 5 and 10 miles per hour. This is going to be fairly consistent as we go through the overnight hours. So keeping things pretty mild and awesome evening to go and catch a baseball game. We'll see a few clouds right around the, the area through first pitch, but it is going to be dry temperatures in the 70s for the baseball game. Notice another mild night will be upon us. Temperatures only falling into the 50s and it'll be under partly cloudy skies and we'll be in and out of the cloud cover Thursday. I think we'll see more cloud cover in the morning, more sunshine in the afternoon, but it's the afternoon when you're going to notice those humidity levels start to creep up. Temperatures returning into the 70s and lower 80s for a lot of us as we head into to the overnight hours. A lot of us are dry. Maybe a stray shower chance towards the NRV and this is all ahead of our system that's currently developing off towards Texas. Here it is. Already some warnings and even a watch box in place for northern portions of Texas, even the Oklahoma panhandle. This low is going to quickly track to the east northeast and bring us the potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms on Friday. All of us in the yellow here. That's a slight chance for severe weather again on Friday. What we're looking for is some very heavy downpours as well as some damaging wind gusts. So timing this out. Just a stray shower chance on Thursday. Watch what happens on Friday. This low gets really close to the area Friday morning. It looks like towards the afternoon. That's when we're anticipating some torrential downpours. You see those yellows and oranges in association with that cold front. That's where that potential will be, as well as those damaging wind gusts. And they'll track to the north and east towards the New England states. And we'll see some wraparound energy too. Some rain showers. Could even see some sleep pellets for our higher elevations. But more importantly, we've been talking about the potential for flooding. We already saw a lot of rainfall last weekend in the areas that did going to see even more. So expected rainfall about one to three inches could even be two to three inches across the area widespread. Three hour flood risk about one to two. That's all we need to do to get some flash flooding. So heads up great opportunity to download the Storm Team 10 weather app so you can get those alerts again for Friday. Tomorrow dry and warm a mixture of sun and clouds temperatures in the 70s across the NRV in the lower 80s near the Roanoke Valley Central and even for South Side 70 the expected high for Friday again. The potential for strong to severe thunderstorms. It is there. Download that Storm Team 10 weather app to have those alerts sent dry, straight to your phone. Hit a bit shower on Saturday and then Easter Sunday looking dry. Mm -hmm. It's going to be cooler in the morning for the sunrise services, but looking great for those Easter egg hunts. Today looked great. Today was amazing. Right? Did you have the top oh, down on the car? I huh? did. You did? And it was awesome. Nice. <laughs> that is great. Perfect. You did look a little Perfect. wind blown when you walked in. I was like, I bet he brought that convertible. Hair by convertible. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, you some days it's day. just going to have to be that way. Okay, <laughs> right. I'll take it. It was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. it. Thank you, Beverly. You bet. Hey, we have some warnings tonight over an herbal supplement that could make you sick. We'll tell you the signs and symptoms you need to watch out for. Does it taste better? A hiking trip takes a deadly turn. A college student died while apparently repositioning herself for a photo. This was during a hike in Arkansas. Now first responders in Roanoke County have a warning for people looking to enjoy the great outdoors. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett explains. Hikers wanting to grab that perfect picture at the top of the peak could be putting their lives at risk. Hikers and thrill seekers beware. 
A 2018 study found that more than 250 people around the world have died while trying to take selfies, either drowning, getting hit by trains, or falling from heights. The number of deaths jumped from two in 2011 to 98 in 2016. In the Roanoke Valley, hiking and those picturesque views are a major attraction. But fire officials say a photo isn't worth risking your life. We want people to enjoy the natural beauty. Certainly it's photogenic, we understand that. Um, but we want you to be careful uh, and use some caution uh, in those areas as well. Admission is free on Saturday, April 20th to all national parks. So if you're going to go out for a hike, get somebody else to take your photo or stay away from the ledge. Reporting in Catawba, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News working for you. Well, coming up at six, we have some tips from hikers and first responders to keep you safe on the trails. And an update to a story we first told you about in the fall. Middle school students now have a greenhouse to use in Botetourt County. Central Academy has a spot behind the school where they grow vegetables. They start the seeds over the summer and then harvest the plants when they come back in the fall. Well, now with a greenhouse, they can start the seeds earlier and grow more food. They hope to get, excuse me, give more veggies to the salad bar for students and teachers to eat and to donate to the local food pantries. Um, it's really fun. It's more hands-on stuff that we can do. This teaches them life skills. Um, the students, they get to collaborate together. Um, they get to use that conviction skill. And what the conviction skill is in Botetourt County is they stay determined in whatever they're doing. If they mess up, they can fix it. They can go back and make things right. And now they're working on building a chicken coop, and that should be ready in the next couple of weeks. They hope to have picnic tables by the end of the year, the beginning of next year, for students to have class outside. Satellites created by Virginia College students are on their way to the International Space Station. The three CubeSat satellites blasted off on the Antares rocket from NASA's station on Wallops Island. Astronauts from the International Space Station will drop the satellites built at Virginia Tech, UVA and ODU into orbit. There, the satellites will collect data that could help scientists better design rockets that will orbit the Earth. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight at 5.30. Hundreds of shows and the harvester is only five years in. The major impact on the Rocky Mount region. And make sure you check your freezer. A sweet treat could make you sick. That's coming up later tonight on 10 News at 5. At Belk and Belk.com. Just into the 10 News newsrooms, uh, Virginia State Police crews are on the scene of an accident in Alta Vista. Right now, we know a truck carrying an SUV has gone down an embankment, and we're working to bring you more details about the accident. A Virginia Poison Control Center is issuing a warning tonight about an herbal supplement that's been linked to drug overdoses and deaths. It's called Kratom. The plant, related to coffee, is from Southeast Asia, and it comes sold in pills, capsules, even as an extract. It's not regulated by the FDA. A Carilion Clinic toxicology expert has noticed a spike in the drug's use particularly in the New River Valley. He says it can cause seizures and can have the same effect as heroin, and there's also a risk of addiction, overdose, or death. People are starting to use more of it. Maybe they're taking it more than they should be or more than it's directed on the packaging uh, or taking it with other substances that uh, get them into trouble. So what's your advice? If you're worried about a drug overdose, call 911 or your local poison control center. Federal authorities say they've charged dozens of people in a major prescription drug sting. Of the 60 people facing charges, 53 are medical professionals, including doctors. Authorities say they are tied to the distribution of more than 32 million pills in West Virginia, Tennessee, Ohio, and four other states. In your health news today, a lot of healthy eating tips tell you what to stay away from, from for your food. But one expert says there are things that you should add to your plate to get the most out of your meal. When it comes to breakfast, make sure there are berries somewhere on the plate. They kick off your day with fiber and antioxidants. You can also add nuts, nut butter, even seeds to really pack a punch. And for lunch, go for beans, rice or quinoa. So it's low on the glycemic index, which means that it's going to have a minimal impact on your blood sugar. You need a little bit of those carbohydrates, and especially at lunch, they're going to keep you full and keep you energized throughout the day. Now for dinner, K-Bay says you can avoid carbs and still eat noodles, veggie noodles that is though. She says butternut squash or zucchini are always good choices for that part of your day. 
Preschoolers may be more likely to develop behavioral problems if they have a couple of hours of screen time, screen time every day. Canadian researchers studied more than 2,400 families and the parents reported their child's total screen time per day. Children who spent at least two hours in front of a screen were more likely to exhibit problems such as inattention and to meet the criteria for ADHD. And if you think your favorite bottle of wine is a little pricey, wait until you hear about this one. Oh, just wait. Can you imagine paying thousands of dollars for a bottle of wine? And we're talking about $40,000. That's how much this winemaker in Hungary wants. The general manager of the winery says his wine has a rich royal heritage that dates back to the 1500s. But that's not why the wine costs so much. The $40,000 price tag is due to the amount of manual labor required to produce it. The grapes are picked one by one for a daily mm. harvest of only about 20 pounds in a good year. It takes a ton of grapes to make a single bottle and only 18 bottles are currently offered for sale. So, Lindsay, at your next party, I fully expect that you'll be hooking <laughs> us up and no. uh, we'll be enjoying a nice bottle of wine. I don't, I even, okay, obviously, I mean, who has that kind of money? But if I did, I still don't feel like I would spend it on that. Mm -hmm. Would friend, you? Well, no, no, never. But a friend of mine goes to through Dubai on his way to uh -huh. working in Afghanistan yeah. some as a okay. contractor. And he says when you go in the duty-free shop, there's a whole case of wines that all start at those prices. I don't even look at that. Okay. Well, I mean, where would you even go to look? I mean, look right. in Dubai, but I mean, right. still, no. it's hard to believe there's just another whole section of the world in the way they live. Of a million other places to spend that money. Yeah. 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 I don't okay. Know. There you go. Our 90 Minutes of News continues next. Stay with us for 10 News at 5.30. Thanks in Aquatics in Roanoke. Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 5.30, working for you. Now at 5.30, during an already difficult time, a Colorado community all too familiar with the tragedy is left shaken. We are used to threats, frankly, at Columbine. This one felt different, it was different, and uh, it certainly had our attention. We'll tell you what police are saying about the 18-year-old who was infatuated with the 1999 Columbine High School Massacre. Plus, Time Magazine names its 100 most influential people in the world. The famous faces on the top of the list. And then figuring out how to pay for schools in Danville, what the superintendent thinks might be the answer. Well, nearly 20 years after the deadly attack at Columbine High School, a woman that federal agents called a credible threat traveled to the area buying a shotgun and ammunition. That incident led to hundreds of school closures in the area and an intense search, which ended this afternoon in the mountains outside of Denver. Jay Gray has the details. What federal agents called a massive manhunt is now over in Colorado after 18-year-old Sol Pais was found dead in a remote area on the outskirts of Denver. The FBI recently just confirmed that um, that they have found uh, Ms. Pais um, deceased from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Investigators say the troubled teen was infatuated with the massacre at Columbine High School, traveling to the area this week buying a shotgun and ammunition. We are used to threats, frankly, at Columbine. This one felt different, it was different, and uh, it certainly had our attention. Law enforcement has not confirmed newly uncovered social media posts that appear to be from Pais, including a blog and journal with disturbing entries about suicide and weapons, along with sketches of guns and knives. Under the username Dissolved Girl, she talks about planning and organizing for the day and asks about buying a shotgun in Colorado. Schools across the area, including Columbine, were shut down today as a precaution during what for many was already a difficult and painful time with ceremonies and remembrances scheduled Saturday, marking 20 years since the massacre. I'm always inspired by this community's capacity, uh, resilience and capacity for good in the face of unimaginable evil. A community still working to heal the scars that linger two decades after the attack. Jay Gray, NBC News. 
Singer Taylor Swift, TV journalist Gail King, and soccer star Mohamed Salah are among the six famous faces featured on the cover of Time's annual 100 Most Influential People in the World issue. The other cover stars also include House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and actors Sandra Oh and Dwayne Johnson. The issue is comprised of short tributes to its honorees that are written by fellow global leaders throughout all industries. President Donald Trump, special counsel Robert Mueller, former first lady Michelle Obama were among the 100 people on this year's list. Let's start now to your forecast. Boy, we had a beautiful Sunday day today. Temperatures in the high 70s. And for more on what we can expect tonight, here's Storm Team 10 meteorologist Beverly Perry. What do you think, Beverly? Oh, it was an amazing day. So if you had the opportunity to go outside, I hope you enjoyed it. Humidity levels certainly were low today. They're going to be creeping up come tomorrow. But check out the view on our downtown Roanoke Sky Cam. Such a beautiful view. Certainly the case across the board, as a matter of fact. We have a temperature of 81 in Roanoke, 76 in Blackstone, 75 in Covington. But we're coming in at 80 degrees in Danville and we have those clouds. Just a few of them. They've been of the higher variety, not completely blocking out the sunshine, but we're tracking this system right here. Churning across portions of Texas and Oklahoma. This is going to bring us the potential for severe weather come Friday, but this evening looking fantastic. Just a few clouds overhead, certainly on the warmer side of things. Temperature slowly dropping off into the 60s. Warm and breezy tomorrow. It's staying dry, but severe thunderstorms will be possible on Friday in this third headline here. It's looking great for Easter Sunday. All that and much more coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Leaders in Danville still trying to figure out the best way to pay for education there. Residents told city council members at last night's meeting that they are not in favor of tax increases. 10 News reporter Coulter Anstead spoke with Danville superintendent today about that meeting. While Tuesday night's Danville City Council meeting was fairly well attended, only two residents actually spoke in support of increased funding for education. Greg Anderson was one of them. Both people, however, said they're not in favor of the tax increases. I'm not sure that tax increase is necessary. Despite no one speaking in support of the proposed tax increases, Superintendent Dr. Stan Jones isn't disappointed. There was a large presence of folks in the audience at the city council meeting last night in favor of increased funding for public, ed public schools. Last week, Jones sent out a robocall to parents. He doesn't plan to make any more calls right now. If cuts have to be made to the city's current budget for the upcoming fiscal year, he says those cuts would have a negative impact on students. I would hope that it would not require us to close the school, but that could be uh, one of the things that we'd have to consider. Anderson wonders if the money for the Industrial Development Authority and other money in the city's proposed budget wouldn't be better spent on education in order to help city council avoid tax increases. I think that they need to dig deep into the budget. Danville City Manager Ken Larking says the IDA money is necessary for economic development, plus using that money to fund education doesn't make sense. The IDA is receiving their funding for economic development through a one-time revenue source uh, in order to uh, provide funding for education, it needs to be a sustainable revenue source. A final draft of the city's budget is scheduled to be presented to the public for comment by April 30th. In Danville, Coulter Anstat, 10 News, working for you. A Grammy-nominated artist is in the Hill City tonight. Gospel artist and songwriter Travis Green led praise and worship at Liberty University's convocation. Green is also a pastor and preached to students to let go of their worries and help lead others to a place of freedom. I like that he was different from most speakers because he did worship and he um, preached, but also he was different because he related to us and he used like modern slang too, which was nice. Like he said, God flexed on us and I really like that. In an hour, Green will perform at the Vine Center and help end LU's campus community event. Well, there's a new mural in Danville. It's made of a special weather resistant plastic and it's been installed in the parking lot at the Cedar Terrace Housing Complex. A grant from Danville Regional Foundation paid for the uh, mural. Three members of the youth group at the housing complex came up with the design, along with the design for a mural that's being painted on a retaining wall at the complex. The youth group hopes to eventually expand to other parts of the city as well. Well, it was another beautiful day with a lot of sunshine and temperatures near 80. This is a live look in Martinsville where we are seeing those beautiful blue skies, but there are some changes headed our way. We'll let you know when the rain returns. Plus, ice cream that you have in your freezer may not be safe to eat. The Ben & Jerry's flavors on the recall list. First, here's a look at how stocks of local interest finish the day on Wall Street. intelligent.
intelligence. say today was a perfect day for shorts and flip flops, right? It was absolutely gorgeous. We do have a few clouds on our Virginia Tech sky cam in Blacksburg, but overall a lot of us seeing some sunshine. Just a few of those clouds drifting through those uh, thicker clouds, but overall as we continue over the course of the next few hours, we're still going to be in and out of the clouds and feeling great. 76 is what we have in Blacksburg right now. 71 in Hillsville into the 80s we go though across the south side 80 in Danville 86 in Smith Mound Lake and 81 degrees in Roanoke. We have more of that south wind. It's been running between about 5 and 15 miles per hour as we head into the day tomorrow. It's going to be a little bit on the breezier side of things, but this south wind is going to keep us on the mild side of things tonight. Look at the overnight lows, partly cloudy temperatures. Falling into the 50s. Yeah, feeling great to start the day tomorrow. Temperatures surging back into the 70s and lower 80s. We'll have a mixture of sun and clouds, but we are watching a system, a potent system, as a matter of fact, that'll be moving in for Friday. And right now it is turning off towards uh, the Texas area and it'll be shooting our way. It'll bring us the potential for severe weather, but this is a risk for severe weather tomorrow across Mississippi, Louisiana, and portions of Alabama, even all the way to uh, Tennessee. Then it shifts off towards the eastern seaboard. You can see the parts of the Roanoke area as well as a good chunk of the viewing area in the slight risk for severe weather. So this is what it looks like through the 11 o'clock on Thursday. A hit or miss rain shower will be possible basically west of the 77 corridor. Then moisture really starts to ramp up, push into the area. Here's the boundary snapshot Friday at 11 o'clock. See those yellows and oranges with that cold front. Some very heavy rainfall is association with this system as well as the potential for some damaging winds. This system starts to work through, especially in the second part of the day on Friday through about 11 o'clock. Then it shifts off towards the New England states. Looks like we will see a few rain showers come Saturday. They're just going to be hit or miss rain showers from some wraparound moisture. But overall, like I said, we're going to see a lot of rainfall. A good two to three inches widespread across the area. I do expect some isolated higher amounts as we progress throughout the day. So we could see those river levels rise as well as the streams and creeks. So do have a way to get warnings tomorrow, though. No problems weather wise. Mixture of sun and clouds. Pretty warm once again. Temperatures stopping out in the 70s and yes, the lower 80s. But you'll also notice those humidity levels a little bit higher in the afternoon. Scattered showers and thunderstorms on tap for Friday, some of which could be strong too severe. So again, have a way to get alerts. Download that Storm Team 10 weather app. Lower 60s on the way for Saturday with hit or miss rain showers. Easter Sunday, though, looking great for the Easter Bunny. Temperatures will be in the 70s. And then if you miss the 80s, they do return come Monday and Tuesday. John. Uh, local Performance Center is celebrating a milestone. We will tell you how the harvester has turned Rocky Mount into a musical destination. Go places. Five years after opening, it's made Rocky Mount a musical destination. We're talking about the Harvester Performance Center, which announced it did a $1.8 billion worth of business last year. 10 News reporter Rachel Lucas has updates on how headlining shows are big business for Rocky Mount. Since its inception, the Harvester Center has become a key piece of the local economy here in Rocky Mount, drawing tens of thousands of people each year who come here to see their big name acts. Last year, more than 40,000 people came through these doors. 34,000 of them were paying ticket holders. The Harvester brings such a uh, musical diversity here. For a town like Rocky Mount, that's only six and a half square miles with a population of 5,000, that's a huge deal. But as Harvester Center CEO Matt Hankins says, it's that small town intimate venue that keeps the stars coming back. Merle Haggard stood in this spot where I'm standing and he, he played and sang. Big names coming to town this year include Leanne Rimes, Rick Springfield, Three Dog Night, and Scott Stapp. It just justifies that the, the investment of time and effort and energy and love that we've already put into it, uh, that it is paying off. Um, you know, to have artists referring one another saying, you've got to go play this place in Virginia. An attraction that's created 100 jobs in Rocky Mount and what Hankins says is hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax revenue. They wouldn't say yet if the business made a profit last year, but business owners like Buddy Hancock says he's definitely seen the benefits. On show nights, we see a huge influx of people coming in from the hotels uh, to come eat and join, you know, dine with us before they come to the show. A venue general manager Gary Jackson said made Rocky Mount a music destination in only five years. 
It's grown a lot faster than I thought it would. It's now approaching its 900th show. Their next feature performer is Ronnie Millsap, who will be performing here at the Harvester on April 25th. For more show information, we've posted a link online at WSLS.com. In Rocky Mount, I'm Rachel Lucas, 10 News, working for you. And here's a look at stories we have coming up tonight on 10 News at 6. Another college student dies in a horrible fall. The warnings about pushing the limits in order to snap that perfect dramatic photo. Plus, connecting cancer survivors across the country one handprint at a time. We catch up with the man behind the One Million Hands Project as he makes his stop in the Star City. Two popular ice cream flavors are being recalled. The maker of Ben and Jerry's ice cream is re recalling certain chunky monkey pints and coconut seven layer bar bulk ice cream sold in tubs. The recalled products may potentially contain tree nuts that are not listed in the ingredient list or allergy information list. The affected pints of chunky monkey have a best buy date of August 28th, 29th and 30th. The recalled coconut seven layer bar bulk product is sold in 2.4 gallon tubs with a best buy date of September 15th. Here's a question. Is your college degree worth all the debt? Many college graduates are actually divided when it comes to answering that question. According to a new study by GoBankingRates.com, 58% of graduates said, yeah, it's worth it. 42% of college graduates said their degree wasn't worth the student debt that it created. However, 88% said they did not regret their decision to attend college and their actual college experience. Most agree that they would not have been able to get their current job without some sort of a degree. A California family welcomes their new bundle of joy in a unique way. We will tell you where the baby boy was delivered and how it all came to be after the always working for you. A California Highway Patrol officer gets a chance to spend time with a baby boy that he helped bring into this world. Yeah, it's a delivery for the ages as it happened on the interstate. We can show you a little bit of this. Just before 9 Monday, Officer Phil DeBean got the call from dispatch. Paramedics are on the way. A baby's coming in fast, so he pulls over just north of Interstate 5. That would be the officer. Jumps out of his car and he finds Tafana LeMaster lying in the back of the family truck. Well, the officer ran to get latex gloves and an EMT bag, but then noticed that the baby wasn't breathing. He took the baby from his mom and immediately jumped into action. At that point, I just handed it to the officer. I just said, you know, fix him. I started to strike him, strike his back and, until eventually he uh, dislodged whatever was in his mouth and um, started to uh, make that beautiful cry. Kind of safe to say Ezekiel Thompson did not come into the world the way his parents expected, but they are happy that he is here now. Both mom and baby still recovering in the hospital. They are in good health. A great evening is upon us. We do have some sunshine on our downtown Roanoke sky cam. Even a few clouds trying to build in, but temperature is still very warm. 80 degrees right now in Roanoke, 76 in Blacksburg. We have 73 in Withville, holding on to 81 degrees in Danville. Temperatures are going to drop off into the 50s tonight, so very mild night. Temperatures straight back into the 70s and lower 80s tomorrow afternoon. We are tracking thunderstorm chances for Friday. 10 News at 6 starts now. Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, another selfie-related death prompts more warnings. Many of us that, that work in the fire department, you know, are, are thrill seekers as well, um, but it's not worth your life. How to make sure that picturesque view doesn't cost you your life. Plus, sold signs decorating the Roanoke Valley, why realtors are telling us that homes are such a hot commodity. Then a trip canvassing the nation is hoping to lend survivors a helping hand. How one man was inspired to help raise money for a cure. If not careful, taking a picture of yourself could kill you. A 2018 study found that selfie related deaths are actually on the rise. Yeah, more than 250 people around the world have died while trying to take selfies. After a college student died while reportedly repositioning for a photo during a hike in Arkansas, local first responders are warning everyone about the dangers. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett explains. 
Imagine you've been hiking for hours. You finally get to the peak and all you want to do is stop and get that beautiful mountain view in the background, but getting that perfect shot could be putting your life at risk. A view like this is what draws hikers like Eric Divers to Virginia's Blue Ridge. But trying to snap that social media worthy picture has gotten his friends into trouble. I've had some friends that have done some uh, poor things up there and hung off the cliffs. Taking tumbles off Devil's Marble Yard and McAfee's Knob. They did survive thankfully, but it's, it's not a short drop. So it was a very dangerous situation for a very poor decision in a brief moment of, hey, this will look cool. People have died at Cascade Falls and Roanoke County firefighters have rescued injured hikers before. It's not worth your life. It can take a dozen first responders hours just to save one hiker. So their advice? Stay back away, you know, from that edge um, and, and don't put yourself in a position um, where you can fall. And be prepared. Know how long it is. Um, make sure you're back off after dark if you're not prepared to be up there after dark. Um, make sure somebody knows where you're going. Um, you're wearing the right clothing. Better to get home than get the shot. Be safe. Go hiking with a friend. Try not to go it alone. Uh, and be careful. Just have a friend take a picture. It's safer. There's free admission to all national parks this Saturday, April 20th. So if you're planning on hitting the trails, try to stay away from the ledge or get somebody else to take your photo. Reporting in Catawba, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News working for you. Illegal drug habits are changing among users. Meth is a growing concern. Meth is a growing concern, uh, really, among local law enforcement, much of what uh, which police say is coming from Mexico. The Rocky Mount Police Department says drug users are moving away from opioids and even heroin and turning to crystal meth. Police are telling us that meth that they are seeing is manufactured in super labs in Mexico and then smuggled in from Atlanta and other large cities. We are seeing that rise more in crystal meth, the, the, the more crystal-like larger methamphetamine coming from Mexico. Better, higher quality meth is easier to get. Um, a lot of people are going away from the shake and bake method and buying the, the high quality methamphetamine. Please tell 10 News that drug trends are changing quickly and that crystal meth is becoming more popular because of price and availability. Homes of the Roanoke Valley are selling at a pretty quick rate. From February to March, the number of homes sold went up by 38%. 10 News reporter Arisha Jones is live in Roanoke to explain why they're going off the market so quickly. Arisha? There were about 1,500 homes available for sale in March. Realtors say people moving in and out of the area, those wanting to upgrade or downgrade the size of their home as some of the reasons as the increase of home sales in the area. According to the Rona Valley Association of Realtors, about 450 homes were sold last month which is a 38% increase over February. Kit Carter with Long and Foster said agents are having to check the listing sheet several times a day before showing a home to make sure it's not already off the market. There are definitely multiple offer situations going on right now, and then when that happens, you basically have to just hope that what you're offering them is better than what the other folks are offering them. 570 homes were placed under contract last month, which is the highest number of March contracts signed since 2006. Now, Carter says homes are selling all across the valley, but South Roanoke and Botetar County are seeing a lot of interest with buyers. Live in Roanoke, Arisha Jones, 10 News, working for you. Montgomery County Public Schools will have a bit more money to use next year after a last minute change in the county budget. County Board of Supervisors decided to give the district $844,000 additional for the 2020 fiscal year so they can hire new teachers and keep up with pay raises. That's in addition to a $3 million funding increase that was already planned. The supervisors moved the money for the additional increase from the school capital fund, typically designated for buildings and infrastructure. The schools had needs to fund both a 3.5% raise for all public school employees as well as several new teachers. As Montgomery County grows, so do the number of children in our classrooms, and so we, we understand that that means more teachers. Education funding takes up about 70% of the county's budget. 
making Rocky Mount a musical destination. The Harvester celebrates five years in business. 10 News reporter Rachel Lucas has more on how it's doing and big name acts coming up this season. Tens of thousands of people continue to come to Rocky Mount just to see the headlining acts here at the Harvester Center. Last year alone, they did $1.8 million in business. Last year, more than 40,000 people came through these doors. 34,000 of them were paying ticket holders. The Harvester brings such a musical diversity here. For a town like Rocky Mount, that's only six and a half square miles with a population of 5,000, that's a huge deal. But as Harvester Center CEO Matt Hankins says, it's that small town intimate venue that keeps the stars coming back. Merle Haggard stood in this spot where I'm standing and he, he played and sang for a crowd that, that he said that he had more people in his living room. Big names coming to town this year include Leanne Rhymes, Rick Springfield, Three Dog Night, and Scott Stapp. It just justifies that the, the investment of time and effort and energy and love that we've already put into it, uh, that it is paying off. Um, you know, to have artists referring one another saying, you've got to go play this place in Virginia. An attraction that's created 100 jobs in Rocky Mount and what Hankins says is hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax revenue. And they've got a season packed full of big name artists, including Ronnie Millsap and Rick Springfield and even Scott Stapp. We posted more information on our website, WSLS.com. In Rocky Mount, I'm Rachel Lucas, 10 News, working for you. Bringing together a million cancer survivors. That's a goal of a mobile art canvas that has made its way to Roanoke this week. 10 News reporter Jessica Jewell gives us a look at the project with a purpose. Hundreds of handprints. All sorts of happy paints. From dozens of cities. It's a big country, but we feel local wherever we go. Each with its own story. Her and her sister were both diagnosed with breast cancer in the same year. All different colors and shapes with one common theme survival. This gal beat cancer, three different kinds of cancer. So she put three different colors, uh, hand prints on there, which I thought was pretty cool. So these stories stick with you? Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, it's locked in there. Jeremy Gorup's passion project on wheels started four months ago, but the inspiration behind it came long before that. The first and the worst hand print <laughs> <laughs> because it was done in 20 degrees in the pouring snow under an umbrella. So that's my mom, uh, Betty, who's just over a year clean from uh, breast cancer. So you just drop everything that you're doing. Your priorities are readjusted very quickly and you realize what's important in life. Now that Gorov's mother is in remission, he's dedicating a year to the One Million Hands Project, driving to every state in the U.S to get one million handprints. This is the canvas for survivors that can do whatever they would like to. Raise money for a cure. We're the only charity that I think really wants to go out of business. And most importantly, create a community of survivors. People that are afraid uh, because they just got a cancer diagnosis. Um, they're learning that it doesn't have to be a death sentence. They're learning that there's people out there that have gone through what they've gone through. In Roanoke, Jessica Jewell, 10 News, working for you. If you're a cancer survivor and you'd like to add your handprint to the One Million Hands Project, the van will be in Roanoke through Saturday. You can find times and locations on our website at WSLS.com. A cat is recovering in Danville after getting its head stuck in a peanut butter jar. A Danville police officer on patrol found the cat yesterday morning. The officer cut a hole in the jar so the cat could breathe while waiting for an employee from the Danville Area Humane Society to cut the jar off. The Humane Society's executive director said this is not the first time animals have been brought in after getting stuck in jars. It's unusual for a cat to even be interested in peanut butter. So that tells us that she was quite hungry. We are hoping that we will be able to get our hands on her in a couple of days when she calms down, but she had obviously been in there a long time. Oh, it's traumatic for her. Yeah. If you see an animal stuck in a jar, you can try to remove it yourself, but the best idea is to get help from an animal expert. And a work of faith. After the break, we'll introduce you to the churches helping 10 News build a home for good for a family of 13. At Belk and Belk.com. I'm so happy. I don't know how to say. I don't have any word. <laughs> 
In about four months, the Ayamba family will move into this house being built as part of this year's Home for Good project. We here at Channel 10 have teamed up with Habitat for Humanity and generous community sponsors to get it done. But this year's project is also a big show of faith. 10 News anchor Brittany McGraw introduces us to the churches working to make the Apostles build a success. It's been almost two weeks since we kicked this year's Home for Good project into high gear. I know all my dreams would come true in this house. And for Virginia Garden, chair of the Service and Outreach Committee at Second Presbyterian Church in Roanoke. There are many, many agencies in the Roanoke Valley that we support. It's a blessing for the church to continue their support of Habitat for Humanity. The Old and New Testament, you know, um, tells us to love God and love our neighbor. And this is really a way that we can show that we love our neighbor. Second Presbyterian is one of nearly two dozen churches taking part in this year's project, which incorporates Habitat's biennial Apostles Bill. There's so much enthusiasm in our church for doing this kind of work. Um, and so when, you know, when the Apostles Build year rolls around, people are excited and ready to sign up. Each congregation donates money, provides volunteers, brings lunch are all free throughout the project. And we're not just church to be sitting here in this building. It's a very hands-on outreach that's also been a part of the ministries of Our Lady of Nazareth Catholic Church for years. We have the time and the talent and the treasure to share, and that's what we need to be doing. Habitat has recognized Our Lady of Nazareth, Second Presbyterian, and St. John's Episcopal Church as this year's Cornerstone Congregations, for their ongoing commitment to Habitat. We're grateful for all 22 churches. These three are really um, going the extra mile and being particularly generous. And it's the combined generosity of all of the churches that will help build a home, community, and hope in the Roanoke Valley. Brittany McGraw, 10 News, working for you. We have a few clouds streaming in on our Martinsville sky cam, but overall not blocking out that sunshine out there. Temperature of 78 degrees, dew points in the 40s. So still feeling pretty good out there. 81 in Danville right now, still sitting at 84 degrees in Smith Mound Lake and 74 in Blacksburg. Looking like a fantastic evening if you want to catch a baseball game. First pitch, 705 temperatures will be in the 70s, and you know what? They'll be in the 70s through the duration of the event. We'll have more of a south wind as we head into the overnight hours still. It'll be a very mild night. Temperatures will only be falling in the 50s tonight, so a warm start to the day will be in a mixture of sun and clouds. We'll have more clouds in the morning. We will be dry despite what future trackers representing, and then more sunshine on the way in the afternoon. Temperatures are expected to top out in the 70s, and yes, the lower 80s do return. And then we have a game changer here. We're tracking this system here. Quite a few warnings across northern Texas, even portions of the Oklahoma panhandle in this watch box. This area low pressure will quickly track off to the east northeast and bring us the potential for Friday of strong to severe thunderstorms. We are in a slight risk for severe weather basically encompasses the entire area on Friday. What we're looking at is the potential for some damaging winds as well as some very heavy downpour. So timing this out, we do stand a chance of seeing a stray shower west of the 77 corridor late Thursday night. Ramping up those moisture levels as we go throughout the day on Friday. By 11 o'clock, do you see all these yellows and oranges along this cold front? That is the very heavy rainfall that we are watching for. That's 11 o'clock on Friday. This continues to track to the east northeast. A very heavy rainfall is anticipated across the region in an already saturated area, especially folks along and west of the 81 corridor saw quite a bit last Sunday. This will continue to track off to the northeast towards New England states, and it looks like we could have some wraparound moisture, some light rain showers on the way for Saturday. Not going to be a complete washout for us. So we do have an elevated flash flood threat. We're expecting rainfall one to three inches. This is like a widespread one to three inches. Three hour flood risk. We could if we get one to two, well, we're looking at the potential for some flash flooding. So get away to have those updates. Great time to download the Storm Team 10 weather app. Tomorrow, no problems weather wise. Mixture of sun and clouds temperatures in the 70s and 80s. You'll also notice in the afternoon higher humidity levels near 70 degrees on Friday. Scattered showers and thunderstorms. The potential for strong to severe storms. It is there 61 on Saturday. Hit or miss rain showers Easter Sunday looking dry with high temperatures in the lower 70s. Alyssa.
Thanks, Beverly. Some college basketball news. Which players are staying and who is declaring for the NBA draft? And we caught up with Trey and Terrell Edmonds about being back on the same team. Sportsis.com. Good news for the Hokies. Landers Nolly has announced on Instagram that he will continue to play for Virginia Tech. The four star recruit was redshirted last year and entered the transfer portal, but after talks with the new coaching staff, has decided to stay in Blacksburg. Virginia's Mamadi Diakite also took to Instagram to make an announcement. He's the fourth Cavalier to declare for the NBA draft. He will join former teammates Ty Jerome, DeAndre Hunter, and Kyle Guy in testing the professional basketball waters. Details of the 2019 NFL schedule started to trickle out today, and we know that the first Sunday night game on NBC is sure to be a blockbuster. The schedules are officially announced tonight at 8, but many games have already leaked, including the first Sunday night football matchup. The defending Super Bowl champs, the Patriots, will host the Steelers on September 8th. Speaking of the Steelers, a few familiar faces were back in town over the weekend. Of course, we're talking about the Edmonds brothers, also known as the E-Boys. The trio of brothers, Trey, Terrell, and Tremaine, were back in Blacksburg to take in the Tech spring game alongside a number of other former Hokies. Individually, they've all made strides, and now Trey and Terrell are relishing in fact that they are once again united on the field as Steelers. You know, I was blessed to be a part of, uh, I think, two of the better organizations in the National Football League. And um, the Steelers opened me with open arms. And Coach Tomlin, man, he's, he's one of the best guys in the game. So uh, I'm happy to play for him. And uh, being up there with Terrell, man, I'm telling you, it's just, it's like being at home all over again. You know, we see each other. Uh, we live together. We do a lot together. So it, it's, it's truly good. Man, honestly, I can just say that it's a blessing. Uh, just having an opportunity to get drafted for well, one, and also have an opportunity to play with my older brother on the same team. So that's just a blessing in all forms, and uh, God's blessed my family so much. I can't thank him enough. It'll be sibling rivalry this fall as the Steelers will host the Bills for a home game, putting Trey and Terrell against their youngest brother, Tremaine. Between Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, and Martin Truex Jr.'s win on Saturday, Joe Gibbs Racing has won six out of the nine cup races. Former Redskins coach and JGR team owner Joe Gibbs understands success is hard to maintain. But I, I think that's the reason why you need to enjoy it in pro sports because you know it's not going <laughs> to, odds are, this ain't going to keep happening. But we, we, there are times when teams get on a run and a roll, and I appreciate our guys and certainly getting. Cole and Martin on board with the win is a huge deal for us, and I know it's a huge deal for Toyota. But I also know it's very hard in pro sports to stay up there. All right, news and notes. The Salem Red Sox host the Wood Ducks tonight at 7.05. The Hillcats beat Potomac 7-5. to And Hokies' new head basketball coach, Mike Young, has announced he'll retain Christian Webster and add Chester Frazier and Antoine Jackson as assistance and apparently if you make any announcement you have to go to Instagram because that's the cool thing to do these days. <laughs> yeah, you don't just like come that. out and say it. You don't have a news conference. Mm -hmm. It's all it's Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah, and it used mm -hmm. to be Twitter. What used happened? Twitter. Mm -hmm. Now we need to like man Instagram because that's where all these moves are happening. Well, I think we're too too old to understand. Instagram is no, like no, 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 no. Well, I mean, I'm we are, we're on Instagram, John but we're not P. making what? we're huh? not making Shameless announcements plug. on. Well, I don't Instagram. make an announcement about anything. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do, it better be on Instagram. Eating for dinner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Nightly news is coming up next. We'll see you at seven.